Hi, I'm David Mengoli, and I would like to take you on a journey in a special town called Galatone. Now, as a little child, uh, I used to come through Galatone very often to go to the nearest beach. And so, for some strange reason, I used to come through this road, but I never noticed a particular building, uh, well, you know, when you're a child. And then when I was very young, at the age of 17, I moved to London, so that was it. And every August, uh, when I came to Salento on holiday, I used to take the same route every time I was going to that particular beach. So I drove past this particular building, and why am I talking to you about a building? Because I'm going to take you on a journey. Uh, we have recently taken on a palazzo, a beautiful end of the 18th century building here in Nardo. Uh, per, sorry, excuse me, Galatone. Sorry, Nardo is another beautiful town, so let's try not to get things mixed up. Although Nardo, which is also very, very beautiful, it's right next to Galatone. There's so many towns dotted around in Salento. As I'm talking, you may be able to just capture traces of beautiful buildings and balconies around me. So I used to drive past this particular road every time I was here on holiday or when I was a young guy, but I never particularly paid attention to buildings or to this building until a few months ago I went in to do an evaluation of the building and I was totally captured, taken, kidnapped, I would say, by the building. In fact, I didn't say anything to the owner of the property, but when I left, for at least a couple of weeks after, I just couldn't sleep properly. My mind was constantly thinking about this building. Uh, some noises in the background is great. I mean, it's in the middle of the afternoon on Sunday. Normally, they have a little bit of a nap and uh, because it's quite warm in the summer, but it's nice to hear that people are still doing things. So, so anyway, it took me a couple of weeks to, to make an executive decision, and the building now, it's going to be part of a fantastic project. As I, were, as I was wandering the streets around here, actually, I came across a little chapel, which I'm going to share with you as well. It's, uh, it's only walking distance from the building that we're going to take you through this journey. But it, is it fantastic to sort of, in a little road here, but there's so many. In, in fact, actually, in this town, there are some major churches. One of them, which has a little piece of the crucifix of Jesus, Ju Jesus crucifix here in, in this town, and it, a, a fantastic facade, which I'm sure we'll probably pick it up on another, on another video. But it's an incredible. Look, we're, we're just stepping in into... This little chapel, which is, the door is open, so it's fantastic. In the middle of the afternoon, you can just wander in and no one touches anything because, you know, it's very sacred. And look at that painting in the background. Probably, I would say probably that to San Francesco, San Francis, but I'm not sure. We may just read about it in a second. And then little details like this. This is like the container where the, the holy water was kept and you know imagine people walking in very devoted and dipping their hand in there and doing the cross and and then taking their seat but normally they would do that I believe mm, when they were leaving the church or the chapel but I'm not sure somebody may be able to tell me about that um, and then yes this is a, a little altar and you can tell the painting it's really, really old. I like the... Well, some, some of you may know that I've had an art gallery in London for 17 years, so when I see paintings, art, anything that's got to do with, 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 with this world, it, it, it gets, penetrates me right straight into my heart. So, when you see this and it's just there and, and then I'll, I've got a particular thing for skulls and so and details like that. Well the painting it's crumbling away but it's beautiful that everybody can just enjoy it. And things like this which have been totally devastated by mould and but they're here. They're doing what they've got to do. So yes, this is, oh, and the ceiling of this building is also of this little chapel. This is only a room. This is literally just a little room that uh, people in the community can just come in 
and pray. Um, and it's rather than going into a big church, which now these days majority of the big churches tend to be closed by church or chapel. Um, as I was wandering around, actually, it's quite nice to see. This is just a pure coincidence, but just to see a sign of a Salento with love. And it's a property that uh, we've got instructions over here. And it's interesting because the balcony of this property is overlooking the little chapel. It's, uh, it's a 19, probably 1980s, 1970s building. Not exciting, but beautiful because of the location. It can be turned into a very, very exciting building. But anyway, we're just walking towards this, this building, which is going to be part of a series, which is going to be Palazzo Zucala. Now, why Palazzo Zucala? Because for me, it's very important to create legacies. It's actually something that I've always done. In 1999, I bought a business and a building in London, and the business was called The Great Expectations. And um, it was in Camberwell. Somebody may be able to Google it. And uh, the old people had it for about 40 years. My vision was to do something completely different, very contemporary. In fact, I turned it into a very, very contemporary art gallery, which survived until last year for 21 years, which is fantastic. Um, and I called it GX Gallery. At first, I was called Great Expectations for a while, so I kept the name. But then it was a bit too long, and it wasn't contemporary enough for me for the idea of having an art gallery in London. So I called it GX, which was an abbreviation of Great Expectations. For me, that was sufficient to create a legacy. Why is this one Palazzo Zucala? Well, I felt a, a sense of responsibility towards the family that sold me the building. This building was built at the end of the 18th century, so around about 1870, 1880. And the grandfather, the father, the three daughters, which none of them got married. I hope there isn't a curse to do, that's got to do with marriage within the building. But anyway, all the women that lived in this building never got married. And the family was called Zucala, which is a surname here in Salento. And so, yes, you may see these beautiful balconies in the background. Isn't it beautiful? And so the family is called Zucala. The, the building wasn't called Palazzo Zucala, but I just felt a responsibility in terms of keeping that legacy. So I've created a company and I've called it Palazzo Zucala Limited in the UK. And the building in, is now part of that company there and a renovation is gonna be starting once we do all the drawings and everything. But in the meantime, as I turn around, now the camera, we've just arrived. You're gonna be, uh, well, there's so many beautiful, I mean, this is not the best. There's so many, somebody's gonna look at that and go, yeah, they, Davide, you know what? I mean, you haven't picked up anything amazing. There are so many, there's so much better out there. But for me, for me, and for many reasons that you're gonna be confronted and you're gonna be seeing over the next documentaries and videos, you're gonna think, wow, what a find. Well, one of those things for me was the fact that this building from the moment it was constructed until the last person that lived in there 13 years ago and passed away, no one has ever had access to that building. That building has never changed the hands and is seen all the different generations. And when the last person passed away, it's like somebody locked the door behind her, Donna Lena. And when you step inside the building, you know, I can still feel Donna Lena in that building. And when you see what Donna Lena has left behind, I think the time machine is never going to be as good as what this building has done to me. So let me turn around. And let me greet you with Palazzo Zucala. It's over there. It's the yellow with the three balconies. And let's walk like a crab so I can get there sideways and you can enjoy it. Now, just I'm not going to spend too much time on this video uh, because we'll have plenty of time to go inside and for you to get lost. The building has got a main entrance, which is that one, opening up to a fantastic room. And then two rooms either side, as you can see, it's got uh, that room over there with a window door balcony and the other one over there. And then this door over here, yes, that takes you to the upstairs floors, which is this beautiful upstairs over there. And then there is an opening over there, which it takes you to a basement and some great things are going to happen with, with that basement. Now, 
Just a couple of details that tells you something about a building if you're thinking of, I want to buy something in Puglia. There is so much out there. What, what do I need to look for? Well, look for details, you know, for things that haven't been, how can I say, damaged or have gone through some renovations. You know, if you really want that sense of something original. Well, one of the elements here that, for me, was so incredible when I saw this building, apart from the color and the painting flaking, and the balconies was the cast iron. You see, we see cast iron everywhere when we travel to France or England, Germany. But in a lot of those places, including here, this, this is magic, um, was removed during the Second World War because it was very sought after to, uh, to build other things, as you know. And so when you come across a building that has got it, that tells you that the family was very wealthy because they must have old tight and didn't allow for people to strip it and to take it away. So when you see the beauty of cast iron and look at the thickness of this, it's just, and the detail, I mean, obviously in them days, everything used to be handmade. So you can imagine when this one gets sandblasted and totally restored, the windows and doors are all original. They go back to 1910, 1920s, probably they were remade back, back in that time. Um, and obviously we are looking at three balconies at the top with the major, with the major balcony in the center and the two on the side. So I'm just gonna give you, and then we'll leave it at that for this video. I'm just gonna give you a little insight of the inside. So you can just imagine what I was confronted. Now, the one that Don Elena used to live is upstairs on the first floor. So I think you really need to, you really need to wait for that. Uh, let's find the keys and let's go in um, because it's just too much to take in. So we'll go in and Welcome to Palazzo Zucala here in Galatone. And can I show you one room? And you can see the frescoes on the wall, the star vaulted ceilings, some of the frescoes, and the cementine, the original flooring, these are called cementine, which once they get polished and restored. You, they're just uh, special. And again, they create that legacy. And should I show you a little more or should we leave it at this? I'll show you one more room and then we'll leave it at this. It's got a courtyard through there with fantastic space on the outside and access to the basement, which is going to become, I can't tell you, but maybe a spa. And this is another room. This is not wallpaper you're looking at. This is painted, all hand painted. It's not a special fresco, it's not valuable, but it gives you an idea of the wealthiness of these families that lived in this palazzi, in these buildings back in the 18, 19, 20, 1920s, where the agriculture, this was a family that was producing a lot of wine. So it gives you an idea of the wealth that was here in these towns, and now these palazzi are just here left, waiting for you to turn them into something that can connect us to the future. So if you have liked, if you like these uh, videos and uh, what we're going to be doing with this palazzo and what Salento with Love is doing, please subscribe and then you can follow it through and you can see what we're really doing. You can also just put a like, which is great, uh, or uh, even better, leave me a comment. I'd just like to hear your opinion. What do you think about this building, what do you think about what we're doing? What do you think about Puglia? Leave us a comment, subscribe, put a like, leave us a comment, and I'll see you next time.